Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Humble here bringing you a brand new upload and today we're going to be going over why you're not improving in Fortnite part two. Just make sure y'all watch this video all the way through for the absolute best results. I'm gonna be going over tons of new things, you know, tons of things that you guys can change here in season six to get better. As you guys can see, I'm already at 8,500 points. We're deep into champs right now, so that's super sick. If you wanna check out the Twitch live streams where I'm playing Arena live every single day, check the link in the description. And if you guys do go in and enjoy the video, make sure you drop a sub with the noties on, road to 100K. But without further ado, let's get into why you're not improving part two. Let's get it. All right, guys. So getting right into it, the first thing that so many people are doing that is stunting their improvement and really slowing down progress is actually going to be overtraining. You're playing the game even when you are completely frustrated or done with it, and you're just trying to muscle your way to getting better. This can be a very, very big mistake because when you're playing frustrated, you're not going to be practicing the right techniques, the proper strategies. You're just going to be going at it really in a half hazardly manner and the main problem with this is going to be that you're actually going to start seeing regression in your skill level in muscle memory because you're going to be practicing bad habits you know and everybody knows that if you practice bad habits they're going to form stronger and stronger and be harder to break so what I highly recommend to you guys is you find a second game to switch off to when you were really just done with Fort for the moment okay if you guys have an offline game or some sort of a chill game it could be Minecraft it could be in any type of RPG or something I'm telling you this this, this can help you so much more than you think with making Fortnite fresh again for yourself and making you actually enjoy the time you spend playing it. If you're just hammering your head into one game over and over and over again and just getting really frustrated, this is going to only slow your progress. The person who plays half as much as you, but then also plays something that they're really enjoying right now and then they switch back onto it, is going to have such better quality of practice and mindset in the long term. So I highly recommend this. But of course, guys, there's a fine line to everything. Just getting frustrated over one or two games and then getting offline to play something else is also not good. You have to learn how to play through frustration because obviously that's going to be a part of any game you're trying to get really good at. So you just got to find a balance and really understand where you're actually burned out for the day and then it's time to really take a long break. Or is it just frustration for a game or two, some bad luck and you really need to just get over that hurdle and work through it. You guys got to call that for yourself. All right, guys, getting right into the next mistake that I see so many people making when they're trying to improve is they're not specifically identifying their mistakes and their bad tendencies and then actually actively working to fix them. They might sit there and take responsibility for a death or two, but then you see them in the next game if you're spectating them or you just happen to be watching their stream or anything like that. You see them falling right back into these same bad habits that they know are wrong. And here's how I think you should fix it. So what I would personally recommend to fix this issue is going to be that you take a pencil and a paper and you write down after a day of playing, three hours of playing, whatever you guys have, just one day's worth of your playtime, and you write down down three to five things specifically on paper that you were doing wrong that's getting you know getting you killed getting your teammate killed whatever the situation may be you just need to write those things down in a very you know contextual detailed statement right so to give me an example here we go for me I swing at walls way too much thinking I'm gonna take them and I am getting shot because of it I'm using my pickaxe to swing at walls in situations where I should either be exploiting in I should be working on that or I should be using my gun to shoot at the wall and pressure the wall in a much better way. If I'm shooting my AR at a wall while somebody's boxed up, the odds of them opening up right into my gunshots are much lower than them opening up and hitting me with a pump when I'm just swinging my pickaxe. I play on higher ping. I know I'm not going to take that wall. Why do I do that so much? I usually get cracked out of it. I get take damage and then I'm on the run. This is a very bad tendency of mine. I need to play to my internet connection and you know, not, not just be playing super aggressive for walls when I'm not going to take them basically. So that's a really good example for me. I do that way too much. Now, for you guys, this could be anything. It could be something to do with your aim. It could be whatever it is, but here's what you have to write down. You have to write down the problem, and then you have to write down the solution, what you need to do instead, and then you actually need to follow that and catch yourself in the act when you're messing up, right? Anybody can do this mental exercise or just do it out loud and say, this is what I'm doing wrong, and this is what I need to do, but if you're not actually stopping yourself in the middle of a game and really staying mindful of the problem, you're just going to fall right back into bad habits because obviously they are hard to break. So make sure you guys are being very mindful of exactly what you're doing wrong. Write it in plain detail and then actually actively work to fix it, not just saying it. And while this step actually does require you guys to do some work like writing stuff down, I highly recommend you try it. I promise you
she'll thank me later. All right, guys, and getting right into mistake number three that you guys are making, this is a play to survive instead of play to win mindset when you're taking a fight, okay? There's nothing wrong with landing soft and trying to win the game. That's obviously the objective of a battle royale. But there's so many times where you have no option but to fight, and then you're immediately playing as the runner. You're the person trying to defend, escape, all those types of words. You're tunneling back. You're trying to heal a lot. Like, you're, you have never take an offensive shot. You never take a counter shot. You're just trying to run or hide, basically. And this is not a good long-term strategy whatsoever. Yes, I understand you want placement, but don't let that cloud the fact that it is a battle royale and you have to fight in it. The only way you're going to start winning your mid-game fights is if A, after you take damage, you are then taking counter shots, which means when the person's chasing up onto your box, they're trying to get in. Instead of continuously running yourself out of mats and extending the fight until you get third party, you need to be looking for a counter shot. Try to open something up while they're over chasing and keep them modest. Or you need to crank up for height and establish a dominant position. You need to always be trying to find opportunities to show your opponent that you're nothing to be played with, right? If you just show yourself it basically is being a 50 pot, what are they going to treat you like? They're going to be overly aggressive. They're not going to stop. They'll be willing to die in storm to fight you. All those types of things because you haven't earned their respect as a player by showing your capability. You have to either open up peaks to play counter aggressive or you have to be the aggressor and get height. You have to do something to make your opponent respect you. Otherwise, they're just not going to stop getting in, which is always a problem. It always is going to make you really uncomfortable, especially if you're not super good at mid-game fighting. So you have to show your worth at the beginning of a fight when everyone's feeling each other out. The real key here is to actually stop overthinking the fight. So many people hesitate and that is the real problem. The second I see an enemy team, always be the first people to put shots down range. Don't be like, oh my gosh, did they see us? Let's not shoot. Let's see if we can get away. No, you got to put shots down immediately. If you're trying to rotate out even, you should be the aggressor shooting so they know not to look back. You have to set the tone every single fight. Immediately get a height position. Don't be the person waiting to see what they do always. You have to mix it up and take control and tempo of a lot of fights mid game if you want to win. I promise so many of you are complaining or, or really worried about your mid game skill level, but so much of it just comes from your mental and not taking any type of aggression to start a fight. You're simply waiting to see what they do and you're letting them get all of the structure of the fight and set all the parameters for how you're going to fight. Don't want to do this man, but let's get into the next tip. All right guys, the next mistake that I see so many people making, especially this season, and it's actually something that I need to work on a lot, and that is being stormophobic. So this isn't really gonna make sense at first, okay? I just kind of made this up as a joke, but basically, Every single time the storm's coming in or you guys are in a storm fight, you rush everything like way too much. And yes, of course, if you're taking storm damage, you have to start getting to zone and play aggressive. But I, you guys know those players that you see, I'm sure we all have that one friend maybe or just someone you watch on stream where they are so comfortable in a storm fight, they are letting the other person's impatience hurt them, right? They're using it as their advantage and they know that they can get out of storm easily using floppers. Now we have the addition of all these different types of animals in Fortnite that are dropping plenty of of white health there's tons of ways to make it to zone always and those confident players who are you know waiting and letting the other impatient nervous player lose that storm fight are going to get out of so many more of them alive they're going to place way better in arena and tournaments because they're really confident in their ability fighting storm and getting out of storm using rotation and map knowledge this is a huge part of fortnite right now and i wanted to add this in because there's like little to no rotation besides cars and boats right now okay so you're getting in a lot of storm fights like regardless of what you do and being a confident player in Storm is a huge part of the game right now. Not just being able to rotate, but also being able to fight in Storm and then rotate successfully. You know, you're not panicking. You're watching your health and making sure you're hitting your med kits and white health at the right times. All these sorts of things contribute to a huge amount this season in particular to being a better player. All right, guys, and the last thing that I want to cover for reasons you may not be improving is something that I say with a lot of caution, but I was informed that this is, you know, something that I should add in the video, so I'm going to. But you guys need to be aware of how much your peripherals and setup are holding you back, but you also cannot blame all of your non-progress on your peripherals, which is why I get nervous, right? So many people complain about like everything, guys. I was able to do so many of these YouTube videos you see on 60 hertz monitor, okay? I was able to overcome that. Of course, I have higher ping and I was able to overcome that and start my channel and do good in tournaments, in arena, all that type of stuff. So you cannot let those things like completely hold you back, but you also need to be realistic about about how handicapped you are. If you're on console, you're gonna be dealing with tons of input delay. If you're on higher ping, you're not gonna be able to edit as fast as someone on zero ping. If you don't have a good mouse or keyboard, you're not gonna 
have as good of a reaction time, okay? All these things are real, but you cannot let them control you and make you feel like you can't get anywhere with this. You just have to be realistic about your expectation of getting better, and also don't compare yourself to people who are on zero ping, 240 FPS. They have all the setup, everything, and they're way better than you. Don't compare yourself to them. Just worry about getting better than you were yesterday, and that is going to be the best mindset for you in the long run. But yeah, guys, with that, I'm gonna wrap up this video. Just make sure you drop a sub with the noties on it. They went out to help you at all for this part two of why you're not improving. I love making this video. It was a solid one, man. The part one did really well. Go check that out. It was posted like a couple months ago. But yeah, I will see you guys. Have a wonderful day. Peace.